the river. Boston's in English gematria, who I am equals 33. Also, how I am, because who and how are anagrams. <laughs> if you think it's a mere happenstance quirk that am is... <laughs> am is in ram. ram a a ding dong of the anagrams. Uh, think again, if you think it's just happenstance. Yeah, it's a happening, all right, but it's not... Uh, without cause or without purpose or, you know, because purpose, yeah? Everything. Not your purpose, necessarily, but purpose. As the Smith says in the Matrix, the Smith, who is of the six, just as the Sith, in Star Wars, the villain side down below, which is where we still are with the sun right now in the northern hemisphere of the winter time, the burial of the year, right here. At Capricorn, sun had his symbolic death, his symbolic rebirth on the 25th Christ Mass, Saturnalia, the baby born, reborn as a buoy bobbing on the sea of the sea suns of Aquarius and Pisces, the man, the water man and the fish, or Aqua Osiris, coming up in about a week now, with a lunar eclipse and a full moon. The moon is currently waxing, getting a, getting a bright, going to be full on the 21st as the sun is going into Aquarius, and there will be a lunar eclipse as well. Aquarius, Aqua Osiris, O rises to Aries, arise to Horus, P Isis, Pisces, Osiris, Isis, and then Horus would be Aries, arise of the Rams, of Jupiter, Amon, Jupiter, Zeus, of Jesus, and Horus, and for the, all the hours, Horus and hours are anagrams of the twelve of the day, the one, two, three. One, twelve reduces to three, so you get three here, three here, three here, three times three, and then two threes in the six. The lesser three and the greater three. The three that goes down, you'll notice six has the circle bellow with the line going up because it's the bottom of Om. Nowhere to go but up from here. Of the base six at the base, at the heel of hell, of sixness. Then nine, you'll notice, has the circle above the curve that curves all the way around and spirals the spiritual ritual of all conspiracies. Of, on the seas of con, cons, piracies, of pirate cons, con games, con artists. Con meaning together and with, like com, with an M, M and N right next to each other, equivalent, esoterically speaking, both referring to the midline of the neuter, neutral, of neither, of neither summer nor winter, but sp spring and autumn, the vernal and autumnal, the rise and the fall. R Horus set. Sunrise, sunset. Sunrise from the right ascension direction of three of the tree. Sunset on the left of Libra, of Venus, of the night, of nine, of the sacred secret feminine of evening. Adam, Eve, odd, even. Dawn, evening, on, off. Greater, lesser. Greater than and less than are on the equal line. They're actually equal to each other. How is that? How could the greater and the lesser be equal? Well, they are, as are all antonyms, antinames. They're all equal on the equator of the equal line of the parallel paravels of L even. 11, 11. 1, 2, tree. The three, the mystery of which one must acquire mastery. <clears throat> of electricity, 129 in Gematria, 2019, 219, the numbers, same as the numbers of electricity. Reducing to 12, reducing to 3, electricity. This morning I got a Carl Jung article to read from the computer.
It's uh, from pr it's Practical Insights of Analytical Psychology, Steve Myers. Steve Myers dot co Jung's regret over I don't need to believe I know. Jung's regret over I don't need to believe I know. Jung's most famous televised quote came after he was asked if he believed in God. He replied, I don't need to believe, I know. Jung, 1959, page 428. His reply caused some furor at the time. <laughs> and in the decades since, it has been quoted by many, such as Richard Dawkins, who cites it as an example of blind faith. Jung immediately regretted his answer because of its controversial, puzzling, or ambiguous nature. Jung, 1959. To understand why, we need to take a look at the context of the interview and the background of Jung's attitude towards God. Background, the context. You always need that. to understand what's going on in front of you, in the foreground. Although the BBC face-to-face -face interview may seem tame by modern standards, it was a pioneering television program. John Freeman used clever techniques to unmask public figures and reveal the private person underneath. The impact of Freeman's technique on Jung can be seen in the first few minutes of the interview. On four occasions, Jung replied with phrases such as, that's difficult to say, and or a long pause. Jung was also taken by surprise when Freeman switched quickly from Jung's childhood, asking if he was brought up to believe in God, to the present day, asking if, asking if he believed in God now. Jung recognized this after the interview. Mr. Freeman in his, this is Jung talking now, Mr. Freeman in his characteristic manner fired the question at me in a somewhat surprising way so that I was perplexed and had to say the next thing which came into my mind. However, Freeman's questioning had worked as intended. What came into Jung's mind was not an oddball answer, but exactly the same answer that Jung had given in a newspaper interview four years earlier. All that I have learned has led me step by step, this is Jung's quote now, all, all that I have learned has led me step by step to an unshakable conviction of the existence of God. I only believe in what I know, and that eliminates believing. Therefore, I do not take his existence on belief, but I know that he exists. From 1955, Sands, page 6. This was not a blind, this was not a quote-unquote blind faith, as Dawkins has argued, but according to Jung, a certainty that is based on evidence. His practice as a psychotherapist and his mythological research had convinced him of God's existence. So why did he regret his answer? Jung did not regret the answer he gave, but he regretted the inevitable misunderstandings that would result. This was because his reply was too short, and viewers were working on a different set of assumptions to him. After the interview, Jung expressed concern that most people thought, the tr thought quote, the truth is simple and can be expressed by one short answer, unquote. In Jung's view, the truth about God is complex because God is a mystery whose nature is beyond human comprehension. In trying to understand God, we each create our own image of him, and the image is never accurate. Jung recognized this about his own image of God. Whatever I perceive from without or within is a representation or image, caused as I rightly or wrongly assume by a corresponding real object. But I have to admit that my subjective mind is only grosso modo identical with the object. Our images are, as a rule, of something. The God image is the expression of an underlying experience of something which I cannot attain to by intellectual means. In another letter, Jung makes it clear that he would have given a different response if he had been asked whether he agreed with anyone's particular image of God. <clears throat> because of the mysterious and incomprehen incomprehensible nature of God, no image of God will ever be adequate. 
he therefore asserted the inadequacy of all images of God, including his own. What should Jung have said? <clears throat> Jung was often critical of Christian theologi- theologians for failing to recognize the difference between their own image of God and the mysterious reality of God. Jung's response to the Freeman question played along with this conflation. It allowed people to think that Jung was talking about the same image of God as them. What Jung tried to do in his letters after the interview was repair some of the damage. He confirmed his assertion that he was convinced there is something there, but also said that none of us knew what is there. In the interview, he would have been better understood if he had acknowledged that there is something very real and mysterious, which we all call God. But the images of God we all hold are different and inadequate. Practical Implications Jung's argument in his post-interview letters can be summarized by saying that God is first and foremost a mystery. This happens to be the first tenet of the Orthodox Church. But Jung was not arguing for a conversion to orthodoxy. Rather, he was suggesting we recognize that any and all images of God are always different from the actual nature of God. Once we realize this fact, then, in Jung's view, we have taken a small, practical, but significant step forward in our spiritual development. May God's love be with you always. Hare Krishna, Namaste, Aloha, Hallelujah. There's something there, but we don't know what it is. And consider that you put another O in the word God in the middle next to the other O, next to the O, and you get good. And then you do the gematria of God. G is seven, seven days in Genesis, which is seven letters the genes of Isis, the goddess, and O is 15 and D is 4, add them up, you get 26, which is the number of letters of the English alphabet, which is from Aleph, Beth, and Phoenician, where we get phonetics of all phones, of all sounds, and all homophones, same sounds. And there's 26 weeks and a half year, spring, summer, autumn, winter, 52 weeks and a whole year, and then 13, the M of Phoenician in the middle of the Aleph, Beth alphabet. The M or the Mem of all memories. Aloha, Hare Krishna, Hallelujah, Namaste.